Hi, it's Steph, and today we're going to talk about ornamental grasses. Ornamental grasses are such a beautiful addition to your garden. They add movement, texture, and color. And I have a few planted in my garden. So today we'll go through the ones that I currently have in my garden, some new ones that I recently bought to incorporate into the garden, as well as some that I've had in the past that have been problematic. We'll start here with this first grass called a Hamlin Dwarf Fountain Grass. This is a more compact variety of fountain grass. It gets its name of fountain grass because as it grows to its full size, which is somewhere between 24 and 36 inches tall and wide, these plumes will start arching a bit more and will create sort of a fountain effect. This is a really great plant. I actually bought this a couple of years ago. I wanna say about three years ago now in a one gallon container from the Home Depot. And what I did was I divided it into three very small sections. And I now have three of these in my garden, but they're not yet at full size. So probably by next year, this will be at its full mature size. This grass likes moderate moisture, so a consistently moist soil. It can take some periods of drought. Um, I do find that if they get less water, they will start getting a little bit more dry foliage. Um, it likes average soil, really low care, low maintenance, and a really attractive grass. This would be perfect for the middle of a border where you can still have something shorter in front of it, and it just adds a beautiful element of texture to your beds. The Hamlin Fountain grass likes full sun and it sends up its blooms or its plumes in midsummer. And they're a really pretty shade of, of tan that look nice as we go into the fall because they actually look like wheat. A grass that I have in my garden that's wonderful for shade gardens is the Hakanakloa or the Japanese forest grass. I have two varieties in my garden. I have Areola, which is a variegated type. This one has a beautiful yellow and green striped foliage and it stays about two to three feet tall and wide. And what's really pretty about this grass is that it has a really nice arching structure, um, a very graceful type arching clump, and it looks really beautiful in your garden. Um, it's typically used in applications like Zen gardens, but it can be used in a variety of different gardens. I've chosen to use it here in my Japanese maple garden. And this grass does like part shade. If you have too deep a shade, it may start taking on more of a green appearance and lose a little bit of its variegation. It likes a well-draining, consistently moist soil. And when the weather starts cooling off in the fall, some of the foliage will start turning shades of pink and red, and it will start sending out these really small seed heads that is typical with some grasses. And here is the other version of Japanese forest grass that I have, and this is the all gold variety. This is the non-variegated version, and this one is all yellow. It also stays just slightly smaller than the areola, and it is also hardy, just like the areola, they're both hardy in zones five through nine. It does need a part sun location, otherwise it will start taking on a green appearance. So in order for it to have its beautiful yellow coloring, you wanna keep it in a part sun location. This grass here is called Carex Evergold Japanese Sedge, and it's a really beautiful, compact grass that you can utilize in a front of a border or tuck into a small space in your garden. This grass only maxes out at 10 to 12 inches tall and wide, so it is perfect for a small space application. This Carex Evergold is a variegated small grass. It has yellow and green variegated foliage. Um, it also takes on tones of white, so it could be green and white with a little bit of yellow. It's also wonderful to use in containers because it is small, it can easily be tucked into a container. These are hardy in zones five through nine, and it likes moist, consistently moist, well-draining soil in a part sun location. Calamagratis Carl Forrester Reed Grass. It's a mouthful, right? But a beautiful, compact, upright grass for your garden. Now mine looks short right now and it doesn't have its fall plumes, 
The reason for that is because we had an exceptionally dry and hot summer. So I do think that these like a, a, at least consistent moisture. So I did have to cut them back because they were getting really, really dry looking late summer. So I kind of wanted to refresh them. But I have one across the street at my neighbor's house that I'm going to show you how it looks now in fall. And it is a beautiful, compact, upright grass for your garden. I first came across these grasses, believe it or not, in a Starbucks drive through um, They had a ton of them planted in their commercial landscape. And I thought, well, if they stay compact here in a commercial application, then they would be perfect for a small spot in the garden or at least stay compact where they won't take up too much space. So the specs on the Carl Forrester reed grass. It likes part sun to full sun. I would say a average soil and consistently moist. It can take a little bit of a drought if it is established. Also, they do send out those beautiful plumes midsummer. They start like that bronze and then they age to a beautiful tan that almost looks like wheat as we head into the summer. They get to be about um, 18 to 24 inches wide and anywhere from four to six feet tall once their plumes emerge. And because the Carl Forrester reed grass is very slender, it is wonderful planted in groupings. In fact, here I have them in a the grouping of three. In one of my recent trip to Lowe's, I found that they had some new fountain grasses. And this one in particular had drawn my attention because the plumes had a red cast to them. And as I got closer and checked out the tag, it actually is called redhead penicetum grass. So I was accurate about the color of the plumes. And so I immediately knew that I wanted to add these to my garden. I ended up picking up a pair of them. I got this one and one back there. And what I like about this particular style of grass is I really enjoy these plumes um, because it is a fountain grass, just like the Hamlin, it will have a fountain like appearance when these plumes emerge. Now the grass is just green, but from what I've read about this particular grass, the green foliage then takes on a bronzy hue as we get further into the fall. So we'll have these red plumes, the bronzy foliage, and I think this will just be a really pretty grass. It is pretty compact. The size on this one gets to be about three to four feet tall and about three feet wide. And it is a full sun perennial, hardy in zones five through nine. Here we have another new to me grass. This is called Black Hawks big blue stem grass. And I was at a local nursery over the summer and this beautiful grass caught my eye. So when I first saw it, it had a really dark green foliage with an edging in this beautiful burgundy color. And so I got closer to it and started checking it out. And I asked one of the employees about it and she said that it was becoming really popular. And so that was it, I had to pick it up. I have traditionally grown the annual version of the purple fountain grass and I absolutely loved it. So this dark color was really attractive to me. So like I said, it was a green at first and then as the summer progressed, it turned into this beautiful burgundy purple color. And just in late summer, it started to have these beautiful blooms, which on grasses, again, the blooms are either a furry plume, such as the fountain grasses that we looked at earlier, or in this case, this particular grass has these open seed head type blooms. So it is a really pretty grass. The specs online for this grass, which I can link below from the Walters Garden website, says that this grass gets to be about four to five feet tall and two to three feet wide. It does like full sun and it is deer resistant. It's also listed as a great habitat for pollinators and wildlife. In the beginning of the video, I mentioned a grass that became problematic in my garden. And this is it here. I, this is actually a division behind my neighbor's shed that I had given to them. And it's not that it's not a good grass, but in my case, it was just the wrong grass for the wrong place. This was given to me by my sister-in-law when I first started my landscaping and I was grateful to be given any plants because I had a lot of room to fill. However, this one gets really large really quick, making it outgrow its space very fast. It's not to say that it's not a good grass, it just can become really big. And so it's important to know what type of grass you're working with so that when you put it in your garden, you can plan an appropriate spot for it. In this case, because it was given to me and they didn't know the cultivar, they just told me it was called beach grass. In just a matter of about three years, I was able to divide and divide and to give away so many divisions of this particular grass. So it, it was really the gift that kept on giving. But because it quickly outgrew the space that I had it in, and I could tell that it needed dividing often because it would get bald spots in the center. 
I eventually ended up digging it out. Um, when it got really large, it would cover the plants that I had in my bed, planted underneath it because it has a very arching habit. And right now in the fall, it would start getting these really beautiful tan plumes and it really is a pretty grass. It just needs a lot of space. So a great application for this would be if you had it as a standalone, um, sort of as a specimen grass, or even if you wanted to use it for privacy, let's say you were landscaping around a swimming pool. Those would be great options for this particular grass. A chorus ogon or variegated sweet flag. This one here, while not technically a grass, has a grassy look and texture. Actually, this is a great dupe for the Hakanakloa or the Japanese forest grass. So if you can't find any of that grass near you and you can find the sweet flag ogon, this would be a good option. And the great thing about this is that this is a problem solver grass. If you have an area that is very wet or that gets um, very moist and stays that way, maybe has standing water for a period of time, this grass is excellent because it is a water loving grass. It actually is grown in swamps, in ponds and so forth. So this is a great option. The other great thing about this grass is that it is evergreen. So this stays like this throughout the winter. It loses a little bit of the yellowness, but it still stays and doesn't lose its foliage. It is pretty compact coming in at only about one to two feet tall and wide. And this started off as one plant and I've been dividing it and dividing it and now I'm up to four along the border of this bed. It is a part sun to full sun and it doesn't burn and this is a really pretty variegated green and yellow foliage. I've had these sweet flag planted here for about two years now. They're very low maintenance, low fuss, they're pest and disease free and they're hardy in zones four through ten. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed checking out the grasses that I currently grow in my garden. In fact, I'm still after one particular grass. It's the Proven Winners uh, Prairie Winds Totem Pole Grass. It's a really beautiful columnar style grass. It gets to be about four to six feet tall and only about two feet wide, and it has the most gorgeous blue gray foliage. So my local garden centers are not carrying it yet, but I have been looking. So when I find it, I'm gonna be adding that one as well. So hopefully you got some ideas. I hope that you've enjoyed. Thank you for hanging out and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button and please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future videos and we'll see you soon.